there's 600 dams out there somewhere getting licked on. I was just like, get it on there. <laughs> Hi, welcome to season two of Positively Positive. If you're new here, my name is Sarah. And while last season was all about HSV, I got bored of just talking about herpes. Though I'm sure it'll come up as I'll always be speaking from my perspective as I talk this season about all things sexual health, more STIs, more vulva and body topics, dating, and more exploration on stuff we should all just really know more about. And I'm actually going to talk to other humans sometimes. While I do love the sound of my own voice, for the love of God, I think we all need a little bit more human contact this year, even if it's just voices in our headphones. And I have a schedule? Who? Me? Yeah, Monday mornings. We'll see how long that schedule lasts. But today we're talking about dental dams. I've talked about them before, but we're really going to dive into what they are, who actually uses them, how do they work, are they sexy or not, all the tea. In true Positively Positive style, I'm going to share some education, my own experiences, and I would be remiss do not speak to the one and only queen of dental dams herself, the dental dame, if you will, Miss Ray Kennedy. She is a nurse, a certified holistic sexuality educator, the creator of the website positiveresults.support and IG account positive underscore results underscore US. And if those credentials did not make this clear, an actual fucking angel on this earth. So thanks for joining Ray and I. And let's talk about dental dams, baby. Hello, Ray. You're my first ever guest. So welcome. Wow. I feel very honored, first and foremost, to be your first ever guest. But what an intro. Thank you. Thank you. So happy to be here. Okay. So we're going to dive right into it. My first question, because this is what everyone asks me when I mention them. What in the heck and bob is a dental dam? <laughs> I know it's it's kind of wild how few people have heard of or used dental dams, but dental dams are just a barrier to make oral sex safer. So it's a square or a sheet of latex usually. It can be used with other materials, which I'm sure we'll get into. But it's a sheet of material that you lay over a vulva or an anus so that you can have a barrier between your mouth and that person for safer oral sex. I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you anyways, do they come in flavors? Of course. I think that anything that you put your mouth on should have an extra flavor if you want one. So there are some flavors out there like mint and berry and vanilla, which I think is my personal favorite. But you know, the same sort of flavors that a condom might come in. So why, the question that my friends ask me, why would anyone use them? Like what's the purpose and for what reason? would you need protection for oral sex? I think that the best answer would be for safer oral sex, but I think a lot of people don't consider the risks of STI transmission and contraction from oral sex. A lot of people don't even consider oral sex as, you know, quote unquote, real sex because there's no, you know, penis and vagina happening, which I think we as a society have gotten really comfortable just calling that sex, but sex can be a whole lot more. But, you know, STI transmission happens all the time through oral sex. And I don't think that's something that people really realize. So yeah, we haven't heard of them much because we don't see them much. I don't know if you've ever seen any um, dental dam scene in the media or in porn or even talked yeah. about in sex ed. Yeah, I mean like maybe some of us got some condom content in sex education, but certainly no dental dam. And I think that goes to show like how little we prioritize female pleasure or folks with vulvas, their pleasure and having safer sex while receiving pleasure. On that note, we don't talk about them, we don't see them in media, and they're not right beside the condoms in the pharmacy or the grocery store. I was in Walmart yesterday and I knew we were gonna be talking today and I was like, I know they're not, but let me just go down the condom aisle anyways. Maybe the world is changing. No, it's <laughs> it's not. So it's so annoying. You have to go to an adult shop and then hopefully the adult shop has them or we have to order them online. I know that you do have them available in your online shop. I've gotten mine online in packs of five. Is there anything we can do at home if we run out and our shipment hasn't come in yet? Yeah, absolutely. I'll share this 
experience too, similar to yours. I was going to do a dental dam highlight and I went out to the adult shop that's right up the road from me to buy a dental dam because I was like, surely they'll have them. I've got them at dental shops or dental shops, <laughs> adult shops before and they didn't have them anywhere. And I looked high and low. My entire town doesn't carry them. So I got interested in like, well, what can I do then if they're not accessible? This was before I had them in the shop. So I did some research on how to create your own. And then from meeting people in the sexual health community, I've learned a couple tricks. So there are a few things we can do. The first one is you can cut up a condom, especially if you have a latex sensitivity, you know, you might want to find a different material because a lot of dental dams only come in latex. But what you can do with condom is cut the tip off and cut the bottom off. You don't really necessarily have to cut the bottom off. But if you cut both ends off and then a straight line down the shaft of it, it opens up into a dental dam. Another thing you can do is, this one's my favorite, you can take a disposable glove. So any glove that you would have like in a healthcare setting or a food handling setting, you can get these at Walmart or Target or your local drugstore. And you cut off the four fingers that are above the palm. I wish I could have like a video here, but there is a highlight on my Instagram. People can watch if they want to learn how to do this. But you cut the four fingers off of the glove, leaving the thumb intact. That'll come into play later. And then you also want to cut along the pinky edge of the glove. So then it'll open up from there, leaving the thumb intact so that you can also enjoy safer penetration during oral sex. So you can put a finger in there, you can put your tongue in there, and it has kind of that same size that a dental dam would have. Another thing that you can do, and I know a lot of queer vulva owners have shared this with me, that saran wrap is a good alternative. Of course, you have to be sure that you're not using microwave safe saran wrap because there are pores that allow steam to release. So it's not effective at reducing your risk of contraction or transmission of an STI. So you want non-porous, non-microwavable saran wrap. And then you can, that has a lot more surface area than the glove or the condom or the dam even. So you can wrap your partner up to your heart's desire and you're covering a lot more ground that way. I just remembered this. We were talking about the, oh God, is it called Up? The new Cardi B video? And yeah. she's like wrapped in one scene in like, I don't, this clear material. <laughs> and we both had the same thought. We're like, safer sex all the way. Yeah, some sort of barrier method or lubricant, just she was oozing safer sex. Yes. <laughs> So I think the main concern that I hear that people talk about that comes from, like we said, the lack of exposure and information about them and lack of access is that it's not going to feel as good, mm -hmm. which like, let's call a spade a spade. It's a barrier, just like a condom is. No one is disputing that it's not going to be exactly the same as with that one. So what is your experience like when it comes to sensation and do you have any tips for increasing sensation through a dental dam? Yeah, I think that, like what you said, it's not going to feel the same as if we were having sex or enjoying sex play without a barrier. But there are things we can do to make them feel better. So definitely lubricant, because if we're putting a barrier between our mouth and whatever we're trying to, you know, put our mouth on, then we're not having that saliva. And saliva is a nice lubricant anyways when we're thinking about oral sex. But so if we're having a barrier, and this goes for any barrier, so even if you're having sex with condoms, you know, we want to put lube on the other side of the barrier. So if you're going to have a dental dam in place, you want to put some lubricant down, like say on your vulva or your anus before putting the dental dam down, because then you're going to feel a lot more slippery. You're not going to have that weird texture, you know, like when you rub your hand on a balloon, that's sort of like squeaky, you know, I can already yeah. hear the sound in my head. That's kind of like a barrier without lubricant, I would say. So you know, to avoid friction and to add pleasure and sensation, lubricant all the way. Another thing you can do is, you know, you don't want to put it on too tight. Dental dams are nice and stretchy, but if you stretch them too tight, then you're not going to have the same sort of sensation. You sort of want them to lay naturally on the skin. So you would just sort of, you know, put some lube down and then just gently set the dam on your vulva or on your anus so that there's not this super tight tension between it. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I fucked it up the first time, which I will get to <laughs> later. But something I noticed is I actually get overstimulated sometimes from direct skin contact with a partner mm -hmm. or a toy. And 
my clitoris goes a little bit numb sometimes. Like yeah. I even have the wand that everyone raves about and it's a bit too much for me sometimes. So I'll use it over my clothes. So with dental dams, yes, I use them as a protective barrier when that's what me and my partner have decided. But I actually, I noticed that I can last longer with the dental dam because my clitoris isn't getting overstimulated from that direct contact. And that was something I'd never thought about, but I started experimenting with dams and then I realized that I could last longer and experience pleasure longer. And I was like, well, this is fucking cool and unexpected. Wow, you're just giving me so many ideas because I have like the Lelo Sona, you know, and it's like a clit stimulator and it's so intense. But now you're giving me an idea to play with it with a dam so that maybe I can enjoy it a little bit more. So, yeah, yeah. thanks for the pro tip. No problem. Even like the, the Hitachi wand, if anyone knows, just Google Hitachi magic wand. It only has two settings. Never in my life have I used the second setting because it's psychotic to me. Yeah, no, I have a wand too. And it's just like, how? How do people use this for more than two seconds? It's intense for me too. I don't know. Getting comfortable with dams was definitely a mental learning curve for me. If anyone has listened, they know that. So I'm curious if you remember your first time using one. Yeah, it was actually after all, you know, like I'm married, I'm in a monogamous relationship. So I'm not like out there kind of navigating safer sex in the dating world anymore, but I still like to navigate these things with my partner. You know, I'm an educator. I like to learn. I like to have the firsthand experience for what I'm, you know, sharing. So when I was talking about dental dams, I told my partner, I was like, okay, we're going to experiment with this because I want to know, like, I want to answer all of these questions for myself too. So he's all, he's such a good sport. He's like, all right, whatever. Um, he's your sexual guinea pig. He oh loves God. it. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Me becoming a sex educator was probably the best thing that could happen for our sex life. So we we picked one up and we got a flavored one. It was the vanilla one and it's a satin brand. I wish I could sell these in my shop, but you know, I got to keep it on brand. So I got to have the pink one. Super yummy flavor. It smelled like ice cream. It was like a light white color. I don't know, it was aesthetically pleasing too to my eye. It was just like a pastel color. But you know, at first we stretched it really tight too. And it was just sort of like a trampoline on my clit. It was just not really <laughs> working. And so, you know, then we put some lube down and it was a lot of trial and error and a lot of communication. I think that that's something I also like to express to folks is like, a lot of us haven't used these and a lot of us are not familiar with them and your partners are especially if you have like cis male partners are probably going to be even less comfortable or, or have knowledge around these things so there has to be a lot of communication and there has to be like some willingness to be awkward and you know troubleshoot together because we we spent a lot of that time laughing and i would say it wasn't like super pleasurable like the first 10 or 15 minutes of us kind of getting comfortable with it it was more of like giggling and making jokes jokes and things like that but that's what made it fun and it kind of helped us both realize we don't know very much about this like let's figure it out together so we just played with different sensations different methods like was licking or sucking better you know was the lube okay did he want lube on his side of the dam so just things like that and it was fun it was not I didn't have any high expectations let's put it that way and it was really fun I remember my first time using one. I had chatted with a partner over text about sexual health and histories, blah, blah, blah. He'd actually already dated a woman with HSV. So shout out to that woman, made my life a lot easier. <laughs> so that didn't face him at all. And then I brought up barriers and he was like, oh, condoms or like, do you mean something else? Because people don't commonly talk about barrier methods that aren't condoms. People don't even understand the concept of that word barrier. Like, they're like, what do you mean barriers? It definitely, I know it wasn't always a word in my everyday lexicon. So I explained to him what they were. He didn't get it. It required a lot of explanation, but he was laughing at how freaking prepared I was to have sex. He was like, yo, I feel safe with you. This is hilarious. Like, let's go. And he was down to try it. So the first time we did, we were like in the middle of getting hot and heavy. And he was like, hey, do you have one of those things you mentioned? And this is the most important thing that I want people to hear. It didn't break the moment. He didn't break the moment. I didn't break the moment. It was part of the moment and it didn't kill the mood because both of us just made it normal. 
And I like mm-hmm. scrambled to open it and I was so excited that I didn't even unfold it all the way because it's folded <laughs> like four times. I was just like, get it on there. <laughs> It was really fun, but in retrospect, I could have probably made it work better if I'd taken more than 0.2 milliseconds to open it and place it properly. And that brings me to my next question. Do you have tips for placement, keeping it in place, securing it, hand positions? Like what is the best way or some options to just make this work and you know, first thing, unfold it all the way. I got that one down now, but if you have any other tips, let's have them. Yeah, absolutely. So lubricant alone will just help it kind of stay in place. You know, if it's wet, it'll kind of stick to the area. But then, you know, ask your partner for a hand. You know, maybe you hold one side, they hold the other, or maybe you hold both sides. You know, it's a team effort for sure. If you want a more of a hands-free option, you know, I did experiment with this sort of kinky harness that I found on Stockroom. You can find that on my Instagram, like the link that I got the the damn harness from. The damn harness, that sounds funny. (laughs) But it's, you know, it's kind of a kinky looking strappy um, harness with snaps along kind of the groin. So you can actually snap a dam into place like for your vulva or for your behind, which is fun. I like that. It's pretty inclusive in that way. It's pretty exclusive when it comes to sizes. They only have a one size fits some, I would say. You know, the fact that dental dams are so unknown, there are very few tools out there that are made for dams. So I think that the more we're talking about them and the more like they're kind of seen and used, maybe we'll come up with more products like this. Like My Laurels is an awesome company that makes latex underwear. They're not FDA approved yet, but these are things that are like, okay, we're getting in the right direction. So they're not approved to like reduce your risk for contraction or transmission of STIs, but they're wearable. So you don't have to worry about like who's holding it or if it's going to slip out of place or things like that. So, you know, I think we're at the beginning of this sort of dental dam movement and hopefully that will have more like hands-free options later, but hands can be fun too. You know, like I like a lot of pressure on my mom's pubis during sex. So I like the pressure there. I like feeling someone's hand there. So it works in my favor. But again, it's every body is different. Your relationship and dynamic with your partners will be different. And this just goes to show that you have to be sort of talking about this and collaborating with your partners on ways that this will work for you and them. Is there anything that we should be avoiding doing or avoiding using with dental dam? Great question. Yeah, so you want to avoid using oil-based lubricants with any barrier because oil can cause breakdown and you know weaken the integrity of the material, which can lead to breakage, which sort of defeats the purpose in the first place, right? So if you're going to be using lubricant with the dams, Thanks for mentioning this because we haven't even talked about which type yet when I'm talking about lube, but definitely water-based or silicone-based lubricants. Those are always going to be compatible with your barrier methods. So find some brands that you love and know and keep them with you, put them in your bag along with a dam and a condom or keep it on your nightstand, have it ready to go. Another thing that doesn't really, you know, take away from the mood or, you know, it should be adding to it, not robbing from it. Um, Again, we've talked about the microwavable or the porous, the ran wrap. If you're going for a DIY alternative, you don't want to use that. You don't want to stretch it too much. Yes, they're stretchy and yeah, you can play with how stretchy they are if you want to see, but I wouldn't recommend doing that if you're going to use it during play. You don't want to mess with the integrity of the dam so sure it's stretchy but you don't want to see if you and your partner can stretch it all the way across the room just for fun <laughs> and then you don't want to use the other side of the dam it's a one-time use one side only because obviously if you're flipping it you're you know your partner's gonna Pointless. put their mouth on. yeah exactly check the expiration date same thing barriers can get old just like condoms do expiration dates are on there for a reason we want them to be as effective as possible and then yeah you don't really want to stash them in like your bag where you're gonna have like you know your nail clippers or something you know if you're gonna put it in your bag put it in like a different pouch or a pocket or something so you're not you know your ballpoint pen isn't getting jammed Mm. through there or something like that yeah don't leave it in your hot car in the summer 
Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, is that a personal revelation? Yeah, that sounded pointed, didn't it? It was. Though by um, <laughs> an ex of mine, we had run out of condoms and he was like, oh, I think I have one in my car. And I was like, how long has that kind of been in your glove box? Like, we're not fucking using that. We are going to order some and we're going to wait or because the drugstore was closed. It was like, I'm not fucking using this two-year-old however old it that's was because it had been sitting in the glove box in heat in winter it's like i don't fucking that's not integral integral doesn't have integrity anymore <laughs> yeah good call on your behalf for sure okay so we know what dams are how to use them where to find them do you have a personal favorite memory or experience with them i'll say the the harness was a, a near and dear experience for me recently because it required so much trial and error, you know, trying to get the size right and like pulling the strap so the dam was in the front and, you know, snapping and re-snapping. And my partner was so helpful. Like there's no way I could have done it by myself because I would mm -hmm. set it down and it would turn inside out and I was getting so frustrated. And it was just sweet to work on that with my partner together and just you know, we're both naked sitting there like cursing this harness. <laughs> and then we finally got it on and it was like, you know, like we didn't actually play with it after because the frustration was so real, but we did accomplish something together and it was just a really fun experience. So yeah, it kind of robbed the mood in that regard. Like <laughs> at least if you're gonna use something like the harness or something that requires a little bit of planning, I would work on that beforehand because this was definitely something that took us like 20 minutes and then by the end of it, we're like, let's just go eat dinner. <laughs> Now I'm just like picturing you eating dinner with it still on. You're like, fuck it, it's too much work. Let me just the eat. dam is still like in yeah. harness in my drawer, just shoved in there because I, I was so over it at that point. <laughs> my favorite experience. So I think for most people were intimidated by the unfamiliar, blah, blah, blah. But with all this knowledge that you and I are talking about, this builds confidence and it has built confidence for me. And that confidence is always going to be fucking sexy. It's like when someone just lights up when they talk about something they love, even if the other person has no interest in it, they're going to light up too because it's infectious. And that is how I approach dental dams now. This is how I tell people to talk about, you know, SDI status, raging confidence and joy. I dropped a bucket of knowledge on this guy um, that I was seeing and he was so curious and so impressed and confused and blown away at how easily I was talking about them that he was the one to initiate using them because I was like this informed confident like sex master of dental dams to him you know I was confident but I like I play it up because that's the best way to get what I want in my experience is to be that confident you know whether it's 100% real or not they're gonna think it is so he wanted to get on my level and so it was like this sexy little science experiment and I just want everyone to have their own science experiments and then we were like making jokes jokes that we were like bio partners and <laughs> i remember so i had that conversation with him and then nothing like happened in that moment but then we were watching a movie and it was like hours later and i was into the movie and i guess he wasn't because like halfway through he was like hey do you um i'm just like do you have one of those damn things like with you right now and I was like, have you just been thinking about that the entire movie? And he was like, um, you know, like, I'm just, maybe, I'm just wondering um, if you if you did, like, I'd like to see one. And I'm a prepared woman. So yes, I did have them, thank you very much. And then, yeah, I like pulled it out. And just like you were talking about with the dam, like we looked at it and we experimented with it and we tried together and it was fun. Like, ah, sex doesn't have to be like this super serious, like dramatic seduction technique. It can be fun and goofy and silly and you can make mistakes. And that's the best way I want to bond with someone. I don't want to be with someone who's serious all the time. I'm a fucking idiot and I want you to be goofy with me. And if that combines with sex, then I'm going to be a very happy camper. <laughs> I love what you were saying about like almost faking it until you make it with confidence. Also how you were talking about this is empowering to like be in control of your own sexual health and to have these things in your toolkit and like how to use them and how to guide a partner into using them. And sort of like this 
all-knowing sex goddess, like, let me teach you my way sort of a thing. And even if it's not quote unquote sexy, I think it is, you know, I think we have this weird idea of what sexy is, like that it's this, I assume I know what you want, we can move through this together without ever talking I just know what you need from me and I'm like that's how people get into situations where they're not having fun and can't speak up the more we're communicating the more we're like getting uncomfortable together not like unsafe but getting out of our comfort zones and learning something new is where these breakthroughs come from I feel like and I'm sure you can speak to this too but this whole experience of contracting HSV and like understanding safer sex and it's kind of been this like aha moment maybe it came a little too late i would have loved to have learned this stuff at as much younger age you know no regrets by any means but also like why am i 30 and just now learning about a dental dam you know so i love that we're talking about this i love that other people are getting curious about these dams i've sold almost 600 dams that's off of the website. So amazing. Yeah, and there's 600 dams out there somewhere getting licked on. That makes me one happy chick. Yeah. So you mentioned lube and something you brought up in one of your online sisterhood meetings and we were talking about it over text last week and it really resonated with me. By the way, if you want to join Ray's sisterhood meetings, just go to her website and sign up to email in. They're amazing. But you brought up, especially as women, because it was a women's meeting, we do not need permission to use lube. And that might sound obvious, but I don't think it is. And I want everyone to let that sink in. We don't have to ask. If we're straight, we don't have to get the man to do it. We don't have to coyly suggest it. If we want it, which we should, because it's going to make sex better. Ray, what should we do if we want it? Grab it. Pour it on your vulva. Put it on yourself. You know, put it in their hand and pour it over you for them. You know, like teach them what you need. Ask for what you want. If your partner is not interested in what you want or your curiosities or your desires or making sex more pleasurable for you, then they are the wrong partner for you. Period. Period. Exclamation point. I don't know how to end that. But yes, you are in control of your own body. You're responsible for your own pleasure. You know, we can't wait around forever waiting for our partners to be our saviors or Mm -hmm. to take care of us. Take care of yourself. You know, like sooner we're less dependent on other people, sooner we'll have more fulfilling, enjoyable sex lives. Period. Something else we were talking about that I wanted to include, you've been doing some research on lube as it pertains to STIs. This isn't exactly dental dam, but it's really important and I want you to share. Can you share what you were reading about micro tears and lube when it comes to sex? Absolutely. So I've always known that sex can cause micro injuries, especially to people with vaginas, because, you know, think about a man's anatomy and then think about a woman's anatomy. A man has a penis and it's external. There's like a lot of skin. And then women have vaginas, all internal, and it's all a mucous membrane. So we're already more susceptible to contracting STIs and more susceptible to bacteria and things like that. So if we are under lubricated, which yes, many of us can self lubricate just fine. I know that people are very proud of how wet their pussies are. Good for you. But our own lubricant can only last for so long. So eventually with friction, the in and out, the air involved, all of that, you know, we dry out a little bit. So lube helps you last a little bit longer and it also prevents against these micro injuries, these tiny little tears to the mucous membrane. This is also can be a big concern with anal sex. So when you have these tiny little micro tears or micro injuries, you're opening up, we were talking about the integrity of skin and material, your skin integrity has weakened. So you're more susceptible to contracting and all of that. And what I was reading was, you know, that's probably why, you know, maybe I'll speak to myself, but why I contracted herpes in the first place. You know, maybe I was under lubricated. I wasn't wearing condoms at the time. I definitely didn't have lube and these little micro injuries make it more easy for these viruses and bacteria to enter your body. Not only does adding lube to a vulva increase your likelihood of orgasm by 80%, it also decreases, yeah, that's like huge. (laughs) It also decreases the likelihood of these little tiny micro injuries. And also friction is a big thing for people who live with herpes. We don't want friction because that can also lead to outbreaks and irritation and inflammation. So any 
we don't want an inflammatory response. So if you're having sex and it's not feeling good or you know, you could be more wet, like that's your body saying like, hey, reach for the loop, please. So it's sort of like coming into that sort of like body awareness and listening to what your body needs. And even if you're wet, still pour some loop down there. You'll last forever. On that note, we're gonna wrap this up. Before we do, please give me one brag, which is a great practice from Mama Gina, the author of Pussy, a Reclamation, which I read last year as per your suggestion. <laughs> See, a brag. So the partner's guide, it's almost done. Yay. I've created a, it's, yep, we're editing it. Final edits on Friday. It'll be released on March 1st. This is a downloadable PDF for babes living with HSD who are tired of educating their partners. You know, so this is a quick fix to that. Your only responsibility is disclosing and then you can shoot your partners an email with this PDF of Herpes 101, safer sex info, how to respond to somebody's disclosure, how to make an informed decision, and then lots and lots of sex positive additional resources to continue people's learning. So I'm really excited about that. I've been working on it for a long time and it's almost done. That's amazing. And I'll say to everyone, if you didn't come to this podcast from Instagram and you've just been listening, Ray's content is so sex positive and friendly and casual and probably most of us experience disclosure fatigue. So this is something so amazing that's not going to be like cold information from the CDC that isn't fucking helpful. Highly, highly recommend when this is available, go get it from Ray's website. The link I'm sure will be on her Instagram. It's going to be fucking dope and I love everything she does. I'm going to share a brag too. I was hoping you would. I was going to ask, so I'm glad that you already brought it up. (laughs) Okay. So I told Ray last week that I was really excited about this. I've actually been saving this brag for quite a while now, and I'm really excited to share it in this first episode of season two and with you here. So last year, when I was getting more comfortable with myself sexually again, I made an intention and a goal that I wanted to fall in love. And I haven't really been in love ever. I've dated, I've had incredible relationships, but I've never really been in love. And I was like, fuck this shit. Like I need to open myself up more. I want to experience the entire spectrum of human experience. That's something I really want in this life. I don't even care if it works out or not. I just want to feel that. And so I put it into the universe. And then after dating a bit, I met someone really special and I ended up falling in love. Oh, Sarah, congratulations. Thanks. So like, long story short, we didn't stay together in the end, which was for the best, but it's one of the most beautiful things that I've ever experienced. Oh, I'm like getting a little emotional. People are used to that around here, but like, I'm so thankful for it. And it was so beautiful and so mature and I like made a joke to him. I was like, cause I told him about my intention setting. I was like, yeah, next time I'll, I'll make the intention that they fall in love back. But I didn't get that far yet, but no, I just, it was beautiful. And I'm so fucking thankful for it. We told each other we were in each other's ex's hall of fame, very exclusive. (laughs) Um, And I just, I want everyone to know that like you literally can fucking do anything you set your mind to. And A lot of my OG season one listeners are probably living with an STI. Like that's not a fucking reason to not put yourself out there. That's not an excuse that you can use to blame all the shit in your life on. Like it's just not. And uh, I'm just like, yo, fucking make your intentions, get to know who you are and put that shit out to the universe because life is really fucking beautiful. And without sounding too cliche, like, I don't know, it just is. And I'm, I'm proud of that for myself. Yeah. That's so awesome. I love that for you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I've turned into like a little mushy cupcake. Okay. I love it. Um, Thank you so much for coming on. This was very fun. Thank you for doing all the work you do to empower women and guide them through sexuality and guide them through diagnoses. Ray, please remind everyone where they can find you. Yeah, well, first I'd like to thank you for doing all of the same. I'm so grateful for my relationship with you. You can find me on Instagram at positive underscore results underscore US, or you can visit my website, www.positiveresults.support. See what I'm up to. Join the online sisterhood. Come hang out with me and Sarah in a meeting sometime or read one of our 
juicy books about sexuality and pleasure in our book club. But yeah, come be a part of the community. We're here for you. Thanks for listening. Share this link far and wide. Leave five-star reviews and follow me on Instagram at Positively Positive Podcast. Check out the website, PositivelyPositivePodcast.com for reliable HSV resources and options to support the podcast or say thanks. Buy me a coffee, join the Patreon, or get yourself a Positively Positive sticker. If you just want to say hi, email me at PositivelyPositivePodcast at gmail.com or leave me a voicemail on Anchor. I'm out here, okay? It will always be me reading all your messages. You are not alone. I'm living positively positive, and you can too. Bye, Brad.